In this game, the future world champion Robert Fischer sacrificed a pawn on move 6 to grab the initiative. He played extremely energetically and with every move activated his pieces in a very creative way. As a result, all his pieces attacked the enemy weaknesses and his opponent's position collapsed under the tremendous pressure. Fischer's opponent Sadie played the English opening, c4, and Fischer chose one of the most aggressive ways of playing against the English, knight c3, knight c6, g3, and f5, bishop g2, knight f6, d3, and bishop c5. The bishop is very actively placed on c5, attacking the f2 pawn. That's why white plays e3. Now the pawn on e3, supported, defended by the f2 pawn, is limiting the bishop. That's why Fischer decided to sacrifice a pawn, f4 in order to make his bishop on c5 strong again. However, this sacrifice wasn't completely sound, because white could have captured on f4, which white actually did in our game, Fischer castled kingside, and now white should have captured on e5 too, which white didn't do. After f takes e, the, the pawn on e5 would have attacked the knight, and of course black wouldn't be able to capture the pawn because of d4 with a fork. In this case, Fischer most probably would have played either rook e8 or queen e8 in order to pin the pawn and next move black would have returned one of the two sacrificed pawns. However, white would still be a pawn up and black wouldn't have had enough compensation for a pawn. Instead of this, instead of capturing on e5, White played knight e2, developing the knight, which wasn't the best decision. Fischer plays queen e8, now the queen can move either to g6 most probably or to h5, and it turns out that now it's too late to capture on e5. That would have been a mistake because now that the knight is on e2, it is closing the queen's diagonal, the queen isn't controlling the g4 square anymore, and in this case, black could have played knight g4, attacking the f2 pawn three times, and its defense would have been impossible. So, after queen e8, as f takes e doesn't work anymore, white simply castled kingside. Fischer plays d6, opening his light squared bishop's diagonal, and now that the pawn moved away from e3 to f4, and the bishop is strong again, white decided to exchange this strong bishop, because its um, pressure is very unpleasant. And white played knight a4, attacking the bishop. However, Fischer made a very strong move, bishop d4. Now, in order to exchange this knight, white must capture it with the e2 knight. And that's exactly what white did. Knight takes d4, e takes d. And now we can see Fischer's idea behind bishop d4. The knight on a4, which was supposed to be exchanged for the bishop, is out of play. It cannot return to, return to c3 because that square is controlled by the pawn. And it cannot move to c5 or b6 either, of course, because these squares are also controlled by the pawns. So that means the knight is out of play. Besides that, white has a weakness on d3 and Fischer will attack this pawn with all his pieces, as you will see. White plays h3 in order to play g4 and grab space on the king side and limit the light squared bishop. However, Fischer prevents it. h5. Now white plays a3, hoping to grab space on the queen side by playing b4. But Fischer does the same. Again, the same prophylaxis. a5. Now b4 doesn't work, of course. White plays b3. Because the b2 square is the only square the knight can move to. And from b2, the knight will defend the d3 pawn. And Fischer starts his attack on the d3 pawn. Queen g6. The queen is attacking d3. The knight moves to b2, of course. And now the bishop also attacks the pawn. Now both the queen and the bishop are attacking this pawn. Queen c2. So the pawn, is, as you see, is defended twice. That means it should be attacked for the third time. And that's exactly what Fischer did. Knight d7. The knight is rerouted to c5, from which it will attack the pawn. That's why white played rook e1, vacating the f1 square for the bishop. And the bishop from f1 will defend the pawn. Knight c5, bishop f1. So what to do now? Black attacked the pawn on d3 three times, and white defends it three times. And white is currently a pawn up. How to increase the pressure? Fischer found a great solution. I will give you a tip before pausing the video. Find the second weakness white has. 
in his position besides d3 and find a very original way how uh, Fischer attacked that weakness. So the second weakness is the b3 pawn and it's attacked by the knight. And of course white cannot play b4 because black would simply capture it. And the pawn is defended once by the queen and Fischer finds the way of attacking it for the second time. Rook a6. So he's going to play rook b6 and the defense of the pawn would be problematic. White plays bishop d2 attacking the a5 pawn and uh, after rook b6 white prepared bishop takes a5. And it turns out that now if black captures the bishop white has b4 with a fork forking the knights. But Fischer made a stronger move. He played rook takes b3 and the rook is defended by the knight and the rook from b3 is attacking white's main weakness too so now this pawn is attacked four times as you see and it's defended only three times so the bishop on a5 is also under attack that's why white retreated it to uh, d2 of course at the moment black cannot capture the pawn because the knight must defend the rook if white captures with the knight on d3 white uh, if black captures on d3 then white will simply capture the rook that's why fisher now uh, brings his last piece which isn't doing anything at the moment into the game with great effect the rook on f8 rook a8 now the rook is attacking the a3 pawn it's attacked two times that's why white plays a4 and now fisher does the same with the a8 rook it he lifts it rook a6 and his idea is to play rook b6 and both rooks will exert tremendous pressure on the b file on, namely on the knight on b2 so as rook b6 is coming white played a5 in order to prevent rook b6 and Fischer simply made a prophylactic move, king h7, moving his king from the 8th rank. Now probably, uh, so his plan is to play b6, and after a takes b, rook takes b6, so that white cannot play rook a8 check. So that was the idea behind king h7. And also the king is defending the queen on g6. So white played rook d1. White doesn't have any active plan. So the rook from d1 is defending the pawn. And now b6 of course. So Fischer increases the pressure with every move. So what to do now? If white captures on b6, then simply rook takes b6. And now the rook on b6 is defending the rook. And also the knight is under attack. And as the rook on b3 is protected by another rook, that means the knight would be able to capture on d3, as it uh, wouldn't be forced to defend the rook anymore. And as the knight is under attack, white probably uh, would have played rook a2, but in this case, as the rook is defended, black would simply capture on d3. That's why after b6, white played bishop e1. Now uh, the rook is defending the pawn. Fischer, of course, captured on a5, and white played knight a4. Now that now the knight has a square to move. And also the knight is attacking the knight on c5, which is defending the rook. So, of course, if black captures the knight, the rook would be unguarded, and white is threatening to capture on c5, after which the rook would be unguarded. But Fischer found a very strong tactical idea. He simply captures on d3 with his rook. Now, if white captures the knight, then simply rook takes d1 with the discovered attack on the queen, and white would be forced to capture the rook, after which black would capture the knight, and black would have completely winning position, black would be a pawn up, and the pawn on d4 would be uh, protected past pawn. That's why after rook takes d3, white simply captured on d3. So white is currently an exchange up. However, Fischer will return the exchange in a forced way. So first he captures on d3, and now no matter where the queen retreats, black will return the exchange. For example, if queen d2, then simply knight b3 with the fork. If the queen moves to c1, then again knight b3 with a fork. And if the queen moves to b2, then simply exchange of the knights, and after rook takes a4, bishop would move to c2, 
and with the double attack and black will return the exchange and black would be a pawn up white played queen a2 but in this case the same happened so fisher simply played knight b4 activating his knight attacking the queen and after queen a2 he played knight c2 again with a fork so black will return the exchange queen b2 knight takes a1 rook takes a1 knight takes a4 rook takes a4 and now the queen is centralized with great effect queen e4 attacking the bishop and also taking under control this diagonal as you see the light squares uh, on blacks on whites king side are terribly weakened and that means black can create checkmating threats so what to do now the bishop is under attack if the bishop moves to d2 then simply rook b6 attacking the queen and followed by rook b1 check followed by of course checkmate on h1 if uh, rook a1 in order to defend the bishop then simply bishop c4 followed by bishop d5 creating a terrible bishop and queen battery threatening checkmate of course that would also be terrible white played bishop takes a5 however that was a blunder because of simple tactics rook takes a5 rook takes a5 and queen e1 check and the rook falls of course after king h2 queen takes a5 Sadie resigned and now i recommend watching another great game by fisher which he played in the romantic style sacrificing two pawns two pieces and the exchange but first like this video and subscribe as it's really helpful for the channel growth